A lot of baby boomers nearing retirement feel anxious about their paychecks kind of coming to an end, but not having an employer paycheck doesn't mean you won't have an income. Omaha's retirement strategist Daryl Bryant is back with the final installment of our educational series. Daryl has been highlighting a single element of financial planning each week and breaking it down in a simple, straightforward way. And today's finale is retirement income. And Daryl is one of the area's leading financial advisors. He hosts a weekly retirement radio show that airs Saturday mornings on 1110 KFAB, and he hopes he really helps folks in Omaha plan for retirement. Daryl, welcome back, and I feel like you really saved the best for the la for last on this one uh -huh. because this is the most important lesson of all. What can we expect when we retire when it comes to income? Okay, so that's the big thing. When you get ready to retire, you're going to transition from growing your dollars mm -hmm. to, hey, I need some paychecks. You know, what you really want is predictable lifestyle, predictable income. So what are the income sources going to be and how are those um, uh, relative to the amount of income that you need. So you might have a couple social securities coming in. Mm -hmm. If you're one of 15% of the population, you might have a pension. Uh, you might have some cash rents or a rental property or a sale of a business or something like that. But you need to add up all these things and then compare that with what you would like to have. So if you want 100 and you only have 70, well, mm -hmm. you need 30 grand a year. And then the question is, okay, is my portfolio, you're a saver, okay, is my portfolio <clears throat> going to be able to, to sustain that uh, withdrawal rate mm -hmm. and do I want to put that at risk? How much do I want to have at risk? So here's the warning. I'm going to show you guys uh, a uh, sheet here. Are we going to be able to zoom in on this at no, all? Yes, we'll we can definitely talking about these zoom right in here, on right? that. Talking about these we'll right have here. Eric zoom in. Okay, so let's look at this one here first and what I want to just show you is, I'll put this right up here so we can see it. Listen, everybody knows that we have what we call market cycles. So we have this expansion peak, contraction trough, peak trough, peak trough, etc. Everybody knows that this is going to happen. To think that this is not going to happen during your retirement is kind of silly. Mm -hmm. Okay, This little red line right here is, is illustrating what happens if you retire at the peak of a market, which we're kind of still at a peak of a market mm -hmm. right now, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, so, But we're just over here on this side right now. If you retire at a peak and you begin to withdraw, uh, withdraw dollars as the market itself is going down in value, it's a very, very slippery slope to running out of money. You follow me? Yeah. Let me put it to you another way. So let's put some numbers to it. This is a big chart. I'm going to focus on this side right here, if I may. Let's say a guy has uh, $500,000, a couple. And let's say right here on this side right here, if we can zoom in on that, you have $500,000. Well, let's say you walk into my office and you say, hey, um, why don't you hang on to these bucks for me for a little mm -hmm. while, my half a million dollars, and I'm going to start pulling, I'm going to start pulling $20,000 per year, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that in about three years. So I'll see you in three years, mm -hmm. okay? And then you come walking in my office in three years, and I've allowed, if I've allowed that portfolio to get beat up like that for three years, you see those negative sure. red yeah. numbers, yeah. okay? Yeah. Well, if you were to have that type of an occurrence, which is not unthinkable, you know, think of 2001 or 2008 when we had yeah. these horrific, you know, 50% declines, right? Well, so if you have a, a, a negative 19, et cetera, and your $500,000, if we can see that, your $500,000, which you started with, gets beat down to 282. Mm -hmm. And now you want to pull $20,000 uh -huh. per year? Well, we well, have a problem, don't we? That's okay. Kind of, you got a big problem. Yeah, so the question is, how, how much do I really want to put at risk? Right. And if I know I need these dollars on a short term, Mike and Kelly, how much am I going to put at risk and wonder if the money is going to be available Mm -hmm. at that time or so we so obviously when you see something like this so gee whiz maybe I ought to segregate those dollars or separate those dollars that I know I'm going to need on the short mm -hmm. term so mm -hmm. that I don't run into that yeah. the problem is it's the simplest thing in the world but nobody thinks about it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. well what about annuities though Daryl I mean what are they and how do they work um, that's a good question annuities are nothing more than a risk transfer vehicle they're just a contract between you and an insurance company so here's the thing annuities get some really positive press mm -hmm. annuities get some really negative press there are annuities out there that are wonderful vehicles but what you're asking an insurance company to do it's a contract between you and MetLife or Prudential or Nationwide or somebody <coughs> like that you want a really powerful insurance company to back this and they're gonna con they're gonna guarantee you something based on their uh, claims paying ability, the full faith and credit okay, of the issuing entity is what we call it. Okay, uh -huh. So you want a big strong company and they're going to promise you guaranteed income streams or guaranteed principal or guaranteed return or something like that and you're going to pay a premium for that. And here's the thing, imagine if you could have something that could generate a reasonable rate of return, what we would call a designer index. Maybe it's something, I'm talking about annuities now, okay, low, low cost annuity that will 
you can tie your return to a really powerful designer index. Maybe it's a J.P. Morgan uh, uh, index, mm -hmm. or a, or a uh, um, Roger Ibbotson, or uh, a Robert Schiller index. Okay, these are high-powered economists. Mm -hmm. They put these indexes together, and but if they're in, and your dollars are there with the insurance company, but if the index doesn't perform mm -hmm. as it, we believe it probably mm -hmm. will do perfectly well. Okay, perhaps it's an international index the insurance company still has to guarantee the payment even if your values mm -hmm. go down. Yeah. So you and your wife retire, with prob you're probably gonna do just great with the index. We sh certainly hope so, okay? But if that index should fail you, the insurance company still has to pay you for life, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, and the one thing I hear you talk about all the time is an income plan. You need sure. an income plan, and it, it, you know if that's something you haven't really looked at, you can call the number on your screen right now to receive a free income analysis. And here's the number to call to see if you qualify. It's 402-932-2141. Again, that's 932-2141. Yep. Or head on over to dbryantretirementstrategies.com. Yeah, it's good information, but that income plan is critically important to your retirement. Yeah, call the yeah, office. We'll tie the whole thing together for you and show you how to get all those columns filled out. Yeah, okay. great. Okay. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl.